is horrible The future looks bleak Remember our childhood To get us through the week We're getting re-enthused Back to the past And the things we used We all know that our pasts were great Escaping the things that today we hate Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Getting re-enthused Hello and welcome to Reinfused. Today we are looking at this interesting piece of equipment. Now this it probably looks at first glance to be a knockoff third party controller maybe or possibly even a wave bird. But you'll see in the center we have this IQ label and that's indeed the company that made it. And this is a fully licensed Nintendo product. Now to understand what this, the IQ player really is, we kind of have to look at a bit of history. And it's not just the history of Nintendo, but the history of China. China has always had a policy of trying to restrict, uh, let's say, items that confuse the populace, that have a chance of sedition. And because of that, they've, they have restricted imports on certain things, and video games were one of those things. Uh, which is probably not, it's probably understandable to a degree. We see it a lot now in Western countries where government agencies tend to attack video games for their claims about causing this and that violence and all sorts of things. But China really kind of restricted it. They didn't want video games to be imported from outside. Uh, they wanted to have greater control over what people could play, including after the fact, after they were sold. Uh, there's also one of the big issues in China is piracy. It's um, it, it's almost understood that if something comes out, it will be pirated almost immediately. Uh, that includes video games, music, videos, anything really. And obviously, those were two big obstacles for Nintendo to get around. They knew their games were already in China, but they were being sold... Uh, through knockoff cartridges, knockoff consoles, uh, and they wanted a foot in that door. Now you might be thinking, well, why bother if it's all those hassles are there? Why, why worry? And it's because China is just a huge, huge market, potential market. It's a huge potential market. There are a lot of people that want to buy games over there, and if they'll buy pirated ones, there's every chance they'll also buy official ones. So, Nintendo worked with a couple of companies that they'd worked before and understood the Chinese market, and they created this company called IQ. And the IQ company released the IQ Player, which is what this is. So this isn't just a controller, this is an N64. It's a slightly redesigned N64 in terms of the circuits, with a lot of the chips that were separate being put onto one so that they could shrink it down to this size. And it really is pretty small. It's about the size of a Dreamcast controller. But it is effectively an N64. It's, it's not like a system on a chip per se. It, it's still got the same processor in it as the N64 had. But it's just very condensed and very um, just modernized construction to make it this small. Now... The other part of this, of course, uh, is twofold. So the first of all, there's China wanting to control the games that are being played, including after the sales, but also the right of piracy, how to stop games being pirated. Now, the IQ company came up with a fairly solid way of achieving both these goals. So we obviously, you're looking at the size of this, and there's no there's nowhere to put an N64 cartridge in there. It, it's just much too small. So instead, every one of them comes with this which is a 64 megabyte cartridge. Now this cartridge is designed to hold all of your games and all of your save games. And in fact, the console won't even boot up without one of those present. Now what you do originally when the machine first came out is you take your memory card, you would go to a shop which had uh, an IQ kiosk on it. You would put your memory card in there 
and you would purchase any games you wanted. Now you could also rent games, you could also get demo, time limited demos as well. Uh, with some of the footage later on, you'll see that they've got numbers next to them and that's literally how long you've got left to play a game before it removes itself from your device or locks it because you can, well it's certainly when those kiosks were running and you're in China, you could unlock them for the full game. But it would also, if a game had been deemed as not being um, regime friendly, it could be disabled and removed from a cartridge as well. I don't think that ever happened. Nintendo, obviously, their games tend to be fairly safe anyway, so I think um, everyone was okay with the content they were producing. Now, later on in the console's life, Nintendo also added uh, an online component. Well, IQ technically added an online component. Now, if you look uh, at the front of the console here, well, first of all, there's this big port here, which uh, I'll get to, I'll show the cable for this later on, but it's basically the video cable and also the power cable. But up here, this little one, that's actually a USB port. And the idea was you would connect your IQ to your PC. You would then connect to the online storefront and then you could do all the same things you could do at the kiosks and also it would do its housekeeping if any pins were removed. Uh, it was a fairly neat system all in all and really it's kind of um, one of the first digital only platforms which was quite interesting. So this was released back in 2003 so it was really quite early in the idea of, of digital only. This is the cable that came with it. It's a nice big bulky cable and the reason for that is also a really long cable by the way you can't really uh, show you that with this but it is very long and not only do we have the standard uh, composite cables but we also have the power plug. So the idea is that you could plug this into your television and power socket and then the nice long cable would go off to the console and you'd be able to play from the comfort of your living room. Uh, and it's yeah so it is a very long cable. Possibly because they tend to have the small houses that the Japanese did, so the cables are longer. Uh, the machine also, strangely enough, because it's China and not Japan, runs on 220 volts, although it does still have a Japan Japanese American style plug, but running at 220. Now the actual download system for this uh, ended in 2016, so you can no longer get anything for this. All of the games that are on this now, they'll run out of time eventually, and that'll be that. This will be worthless, uh, except this year, early this year, a group finally managed to run proof of concept code on an IQ. Somebody managed to leak the SDK and that's really helped out. And so there is a chance that there will be homebrew coming to this uh, and ways of maybe keeping those games alive. So uh, that'll be interesting to see what turns up with that. Now this one... This one is going to be harder to hack because I would imagine, I haven't tested it yet to be fair, but I would imagine it hasn't got the USB drivers installed in it because that was only installed later on. And the reason why I say this one probably doesn't is because this was actually sealed in the box. It still had the seal token over it, over the lip of the box. So this probably hasn't been updated. Certainly it hasn't got any extra games on there. It's only got the trials that were originally installed. So, yeah, there'll be a way, I imagine, of working out. If not, we're going to have to do some debugging to work out how a lot of the uh, how the memory card communicates to try and do some work with that. In terms of the actual uh, control itself, it's quite nice. It's, um, it's quite comfortable. Uh, the stick is a lot more rigid than, say, the N64 stick. It's really nice to move around. Uh, all the buttons are quite nice. They feel fairly Nintendo-like, so they're, they're quite clunky rather than spongy. Uh, the, the power button's interesting. You you hold it down to turn it on, and it will flash red, then go green. But if you you have to make it like reboot, I think you have to just push it and hold to make it re, uh, reboot. But you have to push it once to make it turn off. So that's kind of odd. The start button's very small, but obviously you don't really use that very much in game anyway, so it's not that bad. Yeah, well, it's it's quite a comfortable controller. So anyway, we'll take a look at some of the interface and uh, a quick look at the games although they are basically the exact same games as on the N64 just there are bug fixes in them and a lot of the games have uh, language and voices dubbed into Chinese rather than Japanese but other than that they're pretty much uh, glorious Nintendo fare. So this is the uh, initial screen no idea what those options mean I really should get translations but here's a list of games in total there were like 14 games released and uh, one 
game that was completed but never released. You see the numbers at the side, that's how many hours you've got left to play with the colours denoting how close you are to them running out. This is just uh, save games basically for that game. You'll see that Dr. Mario is it on red because it's only got 13 hours left. I think that square will be green if you own the game. That's uh, just a standard, I believe, warning message. Uh, we'll speed up this loading because this is quite a big game. Ocarina of Time is quite large. Uh, yes, that beeping you hear, which you'll hear later on actually, uh, does go every second or so. And yes, in a long game it is quite annoying. You could also get the manuals for these games as well, which is quite interesting, and you could view them on the screen. Ah, uh, Ocarina of Time. This is a fantastic game. I mean, it's... You do kind of just feel that Nintendo right now aren't utilising their history as well as they could be. The whole kerfuffle with the lack of a proper virtual console on the Switch is a weird one. I mean, I guess in a way you've got to think, oh, you know, it's, it's good that they're not just trying to do what they can to earn loads of money. But on the other hand, you just think to yourself, well, you could earn a load of money if you did... Um, I think that the best phrase for it is Netflix for games, which I think uh, a few people uh, have said. Uh, and they could do it. They've got all the content in the world that they could do that and it would work. But, oh uh, well. You know, games like Ocarina of Time, which are just out-and-out -out classics that... I don't know. There are games that are released now that have got budgets that are multi-times... What this the game the budget for this game was and and they don't compare they haven't got the heart they haven't got the story. I mean it was a bit of a screwed up story really with some of the bits and but it was good all nonetheless and a genuinely good game as well it really was genuinely good. Uh, I am obviously talking a lot because this is uh, unskippable unskippable cutscenes unskippable rather unskippable certainly but they're probably not unskippable either. You can fortunately uh, speed the text up and the text and loading is faster because the IQ has a faster memory bandwidth than the N64. So the speed to get games from the cartridge into memory is a lot faster than it is on the actual N64. So these I believe IQs now are used by a lot of speedrunners because the games are the same still, you're not cheating, but you've just got slightly faster text, slightly faster speech and that just slightly faster loading times just give you a bit of an edge. Which I don't know, it's, it's, it's a relatively rare console, although it kind of feels like a load more have turned up on eBay recently. Especially eBay.com, if you, you search on eBay.com rather than, like I, in my case, eBay.co.uk, you can barely find anything for the IQ. But if you do eBay.com, there are quite a few listings, at least there were when I bought mine. And mine was £107. Which is expensive, but not as expensive as I've seen them. And like I say, it was completely sealed in the box. And I think there are a few like that now. So it kind of feels like a, a whole load of new old stock has been found and is now flooding onto eBay. So this could be a good time to pick up an IQ. Should you pick one up? It's kind of debatable. If this hack does happen and there are ways to get gains back on there again... Obviously, piracy is bad, but you also want to have a machine you can actually use. Uh, if you can get homebrew on there, especially, that would be amazing. Then, yeah, it would be totally worth it. It's, it's such a nice little machine, and it's just very clean. All right, we're coming to the end of this clip now. We'll go on to the next game after this. Like I say, we'll, we'll load this one properly, uh, as I've said there, actually. And you see the beeping, which, yep, yeah, is just continuous while you're loading the game. I don't know, I guess it's a way of telling you that it's still working, although I thought that's what progress bars are for. There we go. And yeah, it's the exact same games as 
the N64. There's like tweaks because this came out later in the N64's life, almost after it really. It has a lot of bug fix games, so a lot of patched games as well. And obviously the, the changes to the voices and the text, so they have uh, Chinese instead. Uh, although some, the, any game that uh, had spoken English, even in Japan, still has spoken English in China. I think Mario 64 was one of those. Could be wrong, could be very wrong. At this point I've forgotten how to do tricks in Wave Race, you may have worked that one out yourself. Yeah, that's it, it's, um, it's a nice little machine, I, I quite enjoy it to be fair, it's... Neat. I think that's the best term for it. It's very neat. It feels, it doesn't look so much like a Nintendo device when you first look at it, but when you feel it and you play with it, it feels like a Nintendo product. It feels solid. The buttons feel really nice. Really nice. Uh, and it's, well, it plays a lot of classic games without having to emulate them, which is, I think, a win all round. Well, Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video, let us know why and we will try to improve. Thanks for watching.